Howdy guys and gals, I'm Kyle Broderick. Welcome back to The Social Regressive. On the bench over here, we have my favorite rifle, Telekinesis, that's what I named it. Uh, this is a Savage 12 FV that previously had the original blued barrel on here. It was a varmint profile, 26 inch barrel, just, you know, it came straight off the, uh, the original 12 FV. And that one was chambered for 243 Winchester. Uh, this has been my favorite rifle of all time. Of all the rifles that I would, you know, sell, swap, this is not one of them. This is uh, the number one that I would hang on to, largely because of this stock and just how much time I've spent with this rifle. I have emptied uh, an untold number of prairie dogs out there with this. Um, and just the way that this feels overall, I. I can hardly explain this. I'm going to take another video just to show you this stock that I put together. This is not a stock that you can go out and buy. This is one that I custom built myself uh, with my father-in-law. We used, you know, files and rasps and uh, all kinds of things to make this uh, the ultimate stock for me. It fits me perfectly. And uh, when I get behind this, it's like for certain shots, I don't even really feel like I need a support hand. It just fits right up to my shoulder and then it all just kind of lays down really smoothly. It's, it's wonderfully balanced. Uh, yeah, gr uh, one of the best things about this just is the stock right here. But then the hardware itself, that Savage 12 FV, there's a good reason why we picked it for that mile rifle that we put together. It just all works out really well. First off, you know, you do get the, uh, you know, the large varmint style uh, bolt knob on there, so it's, it's easy to run out in the field. It's a relatively smooth action. It's, uh, it's very reliable, extremely accurate because you have that floating bolt head uh, on the end of there. Uh, you have the barrel nut so you can get your perfect head spacing. And then of course you have the uh, Supreme uh, Ac AccuTrigger down here that comes uh, with a lot of the Savage rifles. Uh, and w you know, we add all these things up together and especially since Savage does put together a pretty uh, good barrel, uh, you're going to end up with just a monster rifle. And that's how we were able to make pretty consistent hits out at a mile. I think if we go out, uh, especially with some of the data that we got from our first shoot with the rifle, I think that, yeah, we can get on target repeatedly with it. It's just a monster of a rifle. That's the, the 6.5 Creedmoor. Make sure you go check out that video. But yeah, uh, this one has just been uh, wonderful for me. And we're taking it to the next level. Um, you probably remember that that 243 barrel was kind of uh, shot out. It wasn't printing quite as well as it used to. And uh, so what we've done is we have replaced the barrel on this. And I want you to guess what chambering I went with. Um, before it was a 243. Uh, those of you with high enough resolution on your monitors, you can probably actually see it printed right here on the barrel. But go ahead and leave a guess down below. Uh, we'll talk about this in just a couple minutes here in this video, but uh, leave a guess about what you think this is. I'll go ahead and give a clue. My purpose for this is to be able to uh, hit all kinds of kind of smaller game out at longer distances. I want to be able to uh, hit a prairie dog if I want to, a coyote. This is not designed for extreme long range shooting. I've already got the 6.5 Creedmoor and it's going to be able to do some of those longer shots and be able to put, you know, some heavy uh, lead out there a little bit further out. I wanted something that has a flatter trajectory and is easier to get on target maybe at some of those closer ranges. So we're talking about extreme flat, especially in kind of the medium range shots. The barrel that is sitting up here, this comes from Preferred Barrel Blanks. I want you to go check those guys out. I'm going to put a link down in the description below so you can go see what they offer. Their base model barrels started about 325, I think, 350, somewhere in there. And for that, you can get all kinds of different lengths and tapers. Uh, you can get your sporter profile barrels. You can get actually, uh, you know, Sendero. Uh, this is a varmint uh, profile that you see right here. You can get bull barrels all kinds of wacky ones. You can uh, pick whatever you want on there, but then you can also drill down to, you know, individual chamberings that you want. You can, this is a, a Savage Prefit, so they do blanks if you want to be able to cut your own for a specific rifle that you have, uh, but they will do some of the prefits and they actually have quite a selection. I'll, I'll put an image here that shows uh, what all you can choose from these guys. But yeah, starting at about 350 bucks, uh, you can get 
uh, one of their kind of their base ones that doesn't have like you know a flute or doesn't have fluting and it doesn't have a threaded muzzle but uh, you know you still get the uh, the wonderful uh, barrel nut and yeah you can choose your chamber and choose your rifling and when it comes to rifling this is one that I want to point out because they have some bonkers rifling too you can choose once you get your, your chambering that you want for this, you can also choose what kind of rifling you want, including you know how many uh, different lands and grooves you have on there. They have some uh, wacky ones like 3R rifling, uh, which uh, I haven't actually tried out myself. I've done some, uh, some 5R, and that's where you have the, uh, instead of the usual 6 groove, where you have the opposing uh, lands and grooves and you have kind of a straight cut. They're usually kind of a 90 degree angle Or you know a little bit off from there uh, It's a much more uh, kind of a, a trapezoidal sort of shape and you get the uh, the lands and grooves opposite each other So that one of the uh, the lands is pushing into a groove on the other side So you're not deforming the bullet quite so much and you're also not building up quite so much fouling in here because of the, the profile of the, uh, the lands themselves. The most accurate rifle that I've tested so far has been the Savage Stealth Evolution. Uh, and uh, that was an amazing rifle that I've done some uh, really fun things with, including uh, shooting clay pigeons at it 650 yards with that. And uh, so you can see that you know that one has 5R on there. It's a oh, yeah. you know it's a Savage. It has it has a blueprinted <laughs> action and all that. And it's a crazy accurate rifle. But with this right here, uh, this should be an absolute monster right now. This one right here, as you can see, it has spiral fluting, and they've seracoded the inside of the flutes with a, a a green color of my choice. They can do all kinds of insane fluting. I'm going to put pictures on the screen so you can see some of the options that they have. Uh, they have all kinds of cool CNC machines out there, so they can cut all kinds of uh, bonkers rifling to make this look as cool as you want. And then they can also Cerakote either the outside of the barrel and leave the, uh, the, the inside of the, uh, the flutes, or they can color the flutes and leave the outside. So what you're seeing right here, this is a, a bead blasted stainless barrel with spiral flutes, green on the inside, and then uh, we did also opt for uh, a threaded muzzle out here. I do want to be able to run this suppressed, uh, because if you're out coyote hunting, or um, you know, if it's swine or anything, any animal, uh, just getting that little bit of extra edge, even though you are shooting supersonic with a lot of these rounds, especially this one that I want to be extremely flat shooting, um, <clears throat> Yeah, it's just going to help to be able to cut down that sound as much as you can. Because first off, if you kind of silence this end of, of everything, you know, yeah, that bullet's going to make a supersonic crack out there, but the animal won't be able to tell where that shot is coming from if you can silence things back here. And I'm going to uh, show you a video from uh, way back when that I did a, a silencer test, so you can kind of hear the difference of what it really sounds like uh, downrange, what the, your, the animals actually hear. I have actually a whole uh, set of tests where I've gone out and listened to what a you know, supersonic and subsonic, uh, what those rounds sound like downrange when they're suppressed. So I'll put a link to that whole playlist here. So with all these wacky options in mind, what exactly is this barrel right here? This is a 26 incher, so I went with that same length. I want to get as much velocity as I can out of this, and I'm not concerned about its profile at all. I don't care that it's a gigantic rifle. Uh, what I'm going to be using this for is getting this out very far away from game, and then uh, taking my shots from a yeah, pretty extreme distance. I don't have to try to stalk up on them or anything. This is not really a walking uh, rifle. This is one you set up in a good position, and you take your shots way out there. But yeah, this is a 26 incher, so it's gonna get that uh, plenty of velocity. 5 8 24 threading up there, and it does have the uh, the thread protector that they included there, which is really nice. If I wanna take this out and maybe do F class, I can just put that on. Uh, but this is chambered for 243 Winchester. So any of you that guessed that I went with the exact same chambering, yeah, uh, you probably remember that in uh, some of my videos I've talked about how 243 is my favorite cartridge of all time and that has not changed. 
243 is just so darn flexible. I know that we have all kinds of wonderful new options like, you know, 6mm Creedmoor, 6.5 Creedmoor. Uh, we have some that go faster like 22, 250, but this one is still just an amazing sweet spot. Um, I know that there are all kinds of different chamberings I could have chosen. I'm stuck with short action right here, but within that, there are just a multitude of cartridges, Wildcats even, that I could have picked uh, to do uh, in this rifle, but uh, in the end, I just came back to this one. The major drawback to 243 is that it does burn up barrels, so I'm going to have to keep my eye on that. Uh, I think that this barrel is probably going to last a good long while. Stainless tends to do pretty well uh, with a lot of heat. But um, yeah, I wanted something that would be very versatile for very small game, like a, a prairie dog that only stands, you know, about a foot high. It's like an extra large squirrel. Um, I wanted to be able to hit coyotes out to long distances. And 243 Winchester is a beast for that kind of thing. First off, you don't have to pay a whole ton for the bullets like these Hornady uh, VMAX that you see right here. These things just scream. And when they uh, hit their target, these are, you know, kind of uh, flexible and squishy enough that they just immediately turn to lead vapor and it turns the animal completely inside out. Wonderful, wonderful cartridge. And yeah, for those coyotes, um, you know, as they're getting a little bit further out, like usually when I'm out prairie dog hunting with my father-in-law, uh, the average shot is about 200 yards. And for that, this really is just like a laser beam. But then for coyotes, which are probably going to be ranging out a little bit further because they can be kind of skittish, uh, yeah, this one's going to be a, a great choice. Again, for that, that really flat trajectory, it's going to buck the wind really well, especially with some of the heavier bullets. This is an 87 grain VMAX right here. But uh, we can also load up some heavier ones. When it comes to the rifling in here, I did pick this very specifically. Uh, this is 3R rifling to begin with. I've never tried 3R. Uh, I wanted to give it a shot. A shot. <laughs> anyway, uh, 3R has three lands and three grooves that are much wider than normal. So with a six groove, you have pretty narrow uh, lands and grooves. Uh, usually the, the lands are a little bit thinner on those. Uh, but this has just three and they oppose each other. So you have that you know land pushing into groove. Uh, sort of action going on here. You guys are used to probably 5R rifling by now. There are a lot of rifles that are set up that way. And this one is three, so we'll, we'll see if that does anything. Uh, I'm really curious. But uh, the other thing about this is that I picked the twist rate with preferred barrel a blank, so you can choose exactly what twist you want. I could have gone with a one in seven if I wanted to handle some of those really big bullets like the 115 grain uh, DTACs from uh, David Tubb, and there are some others. I think that, uh, yeah, Hornady has some that get up past 108 grains, and then up into, uh, I think they have some up in 115 right now. So it'll handle those gigantic bullets if I wanted to do really long range shooting, but that's really not what I, w I wanted this rifle for. I wanted something that could handle some of the lighter weight bullets, uh, as like the 87 grains right here, and be able to uh, deal with these very well and then be able to flex up into like maybe top out at the 108 grain or 105 grain. They make some really good uh, bullets out at Hornady and uh, Sierra and some others. And uh, I, I think that for the most part, this is not gonna be so much a target rifle. Maybe I could take this out to F class, but I'm intending for this to take a smaller game. So I went with one and eight. And with this one, yeah, I should have no trouble with the 100 grain bullets. Um, 87s are going to work just fine, and actually 75s might do pretty well. Uh, one of the things that people kind of assume is that you get the fastest twist rate that you can, and then you get, you know, kind of full flexibility, because of course this is going to stabilize a 58 grain bullet uh, that you can get in 6 millimeter. But actually, in my own testing, I found that that doesn't really work out there's going to be a sweet spot with the twist on all of these barrels. So in general, as you get a faster twist, I've found that the lighter bullets just stop working. They, they just don't really uh, like that twist anymore. Uh, I don't know what exactly is happening. You know, if there's just some kind of eccentricity, they're just spinning a little bit too fast and it's getting a little wobbly. Uh, I don't really know what's going on. But for some reason, uh, there, there's going to be 
uh, just kind of a, a limited range in there and that I can't go back so far. Like with the original barrel, which was a one in nine and a quarter twist, uh, it just hated those 58s. It hated the uh, like the 65s. Uh, I, it loved 75. 75 was really the sweet spot on that rifle and it really loved the 87s as well and it handled 100s just great. Once you got up to 105, it was just a tumbling mess. It was just garbage once you got up past 100 grains with those hunting bullets. Uh, any of the VLD bullets, didn't like them at all. This one should be able to handle those VLD bullets and be able to handle uh, these 87s that I love so much and I think be able to handle the 75s as well. We're gonna see. But yeah, we're gonna do some real testing with this. We're gonna uh, shoot some eggs at 300 yards. That's my goal with this one uh, to, to kind of prove its accuracy. I'm expecting this to step up quite a bit. I loved the old telekinesis with its original barrel. It was wonderfully accurate but I think that this one is going to take it just way up into the stratosphere. I expect this to be uh, an extreme tack driver. That They make all kinds of claims about these barrels over at Preferred, and I'm going to find out if, uh, if what they say is real. And uh, I think that, yeah, it's going to prove to be quite real. And I'm going to test all kinds of different ammunition in here to see uh, how this shoots and what it likes, and we're going to find out together. Now, kind of rounding out the whole package, I have also swapped the scope. You're used to seeing the Falcon M18 on top of this rifle, and I love this scope, still highly recommend this. Uh, Falcon makes some wicked awesome scopes, and I'd love to test their S30 sometime. But yeah, if you're looking for a good budget FFP scope that has a great reticle in it, look at Falcon. Uh, because the M18 Plus that is out there right now is just a wonderful scope. It gathers a lot more light than it should with its 44mm uh, objective. FFP, you get a choice of MOA or uh, milliradian, both on the turrets and on the reticle. You also have uh, uh, SFP if you want to do a second focal plane uh, reticle on there. And a great big zoom range, so you get 4 to 18 on these. Uh, yeah, highly, highly recommended, but it's time to test a, a different scope. So what I've dropped on here, this is the brand new, this is actually, I think, a prototype right here. Uh, I can see the word Bushnell actually under the word Match Pro right here. So I think that uh, uh, this one is kind of a pre-production. It came in a brown box, but this is the Bushnell Match Pro 6-24, to which should be a perfect match for this rifle. I'm not intending uh, extreme long range with this. And this is set up for match shooting and for varmint shooting. This is going to be uh, just extremely precise. And the reticle inside here reminds me a lot of that Horus H59, which is my favorite reticle of all time. You get a lot of detail in there. You get all your drops and windage values. And so, you know, if you want to take a shot without actually adjusting your turrets, you can do it with this one. But then also when it comes time to do those turrets, this has all kinds of wonderful features like locking turrets that you can uh, crank around. Perfectly positive clicks on here. Everything locks in very smoothly. Palpable, audible. This scope is already uh, shaping up to be one of the best scopes that I've ever tested. And at a pretty moderate uh, price tag. I think we're looking at about 550 bucks for one of these. But you're getting all kinds of wacky features like an illuminated reticle and uh, yeah, all the, the slick features on here. This total is going to be uh, just a bad mamma jamma, and I can't wait to get out and see what we can do with it. Thanks a lot to patrons of the Destructive Arts that have helped to put together this rifle and you know help to keep the lights on and cameras running. If anybody else wants to chip in a buck or two a month, I'll put a link to Patreon. And uh, I just wanted to call out some folks in, in specific. We have the Sportsman's Guide and Stan and Mary at the 338 Lapua Magnum level. We have uh, Peter and um, uh, Joseph Davies at the 300 Win Mag level. And then everybody else that has helped to pitch in or even to get behind the rifle and take a shot. Uh, I really appreciate all you guys. I'll see you around as we test the new Telekinesis, Telekinesis version 2. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to like, share, and most importantly, subscribe. Even if you didn't like this particular content, go ahead and subscribe. There's probably something coming that's more up your alley. 
Check out this playlist right here. This is going to have videos in a similar vein to what you just watched. These two videos we cherry picked for you. And finally, The Social Regressive is on Patreon. So you can become a patron of the destructive arts and earn some goodies while helping us to provide high quality videos just by kicking us a few bucks a month. Thanks a bunch for your patronage.